Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I am Vin, that is Jill, and that is you mm. watching us live, maybe listening to us after the fact podcast yeah. format. We even have a YouTube channel, we forget about it sometimes. We're also on Odyssey or Library, whatever you want to call it, we're there doing the things. What's going on, Jill? Your power has managed to stay on yes. so far, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, we've had lots of brownouts. Uh, if for those that don't know here, here on the uh, Western United States, we're having a lot of issues with uh, o overheat and a drought and and water issues and electricity issues. <laughs> so <laughs> I just keep my fingers crossed that that uh, my uh, oh my a UPS will stay alive as long as it needs to <laughs> if I have a power outage. <laughs> <laughs> anything That's else going on thing <laughs> yeah so i had uh fun over the labor day holiday weekend with my steve husband it was nice to have him off although it was very warm and we couldn't do everything we wanted to do we did have some nice meals together and i actually was a little bit sick at the start a start of it been having bad headaches yes yeah, from this uh high pressure this this heat we're having <laughs> so but i i'm making it through <laughs> i'm just trying to get another squeak out of this mic arm i'm disappointed in you mic arm it oh squeaked once. i see <laughs> okay like, oh man come on don't don't do me like that so good news everybody thread booper <laughs> lives if you have been tuning into that drama i had that wonderful thing where you cut the box on and it goes click. Oh, look, it's on. Very noticeable with the uh, power mm. supply because it's got a relay in it. And click, then it immediately went clock. Not something you want to hear. Not something yeah. you want to deal with because, <laughs> well, you're thinking maybe there could be power supply or maybe that could be a billion other things. Like DNS, it's always power supply. So once I warm booted the box in the studio, I'm like, okay, that's fine. I immediately ordered mm. a power supply and it finally showed up. If you're curious, what I ended up with was uh, everybody's favorite. Here's here's my uh, words Yay. of wisdom. I can't wait to swap out a power supply. Said nobody. Yes. In the history, <laughs> history ever. ever. Because <laughs> yeah. while I was doing, you know, when it arrived, I was thinking, hey, look, a new computer component. I'm like, this is the one. This is legitimately the one piece of equipment that nobody ever gets excited about. <laughs> like, oh, this is going to suck. And it did. Yeah. It absolutely <laughs> did. I got the uh, EVGA 850B5 bronze, to which uh, I know, I know, I'm waiting. Here it comes. I'm like, you should have got the gold, possibly the platinum. This box isn't on long enough Yeah. to where yeah. that's, it doesn't matter. I, I would have gotten like the rouge rating. Yeah. Like, <laughs> or platinum. <laughs> whatever it was, uh, yeah, I'm not concerned <laughs> about efficiency. Um, if this was on 24-7 or something like that, Different story. 850 watts gets the job done. Dual EPS connectors. I was happy to see that. That was good. No complaints. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was the problem. I didn't have to spend two to three weeks of like swapping out RAM and like repasting CPUs and all. Man, if you oh, type that goodness. into Google, mm -hmm. if you type that into Google, that's like everybody's like, oh, yes, try these other 11 things. And the last thing they say is power supply. The first thing. Because you know what it is, you just don't want to admit it. It's mm -hmm. going to be the PSU. Go ahead and swap it out. Yeah, absolutely. And I <laughs> did. I was happy about that. But <laughs> that was relatively painless that day. I just blocked off the day. System was up and running. I'm like, you know what? Let's live a little. So now the production box is no longer running Debian 11. It's running Debian testing. Ah, testing. I thought, I, thought I was going to say something crazy. No. Yeah, just testing. That went mm -hmm. on, I think I clocked it in Discord because it's like, let, let's just try this out. It's like 16, 17 minutes upgrade, which wasn't too bad. And, you know, I had a couple of things I had to play with to make it work. I was talking to Jill in the pre-show about um, Debian testing has this fancy thing called GTK4 in it. You might have heard of it, but <laughs> I was blissfully unaware. I wasn't even thinking about GTK4 until I opened up the calculator to do some math. And the default was melt your face off bright. Wait, ah! Just, ah <laughs> so I had, to do, had to search and find how to set like prefer dark. Everything's great. All that's working. No problems with it. Uh, no big gotchus. 
upgrading from currently from 11 to testing. You do the thing, you change your app sources, you let it run, and then you reboot the system, you try to do the update, and you go through your conflicting packages, and you do it the Vin way, where mm-hmm. you just highlight a couple of rows and do apt reinstall until it gets down to nothing and you're finished. That's Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's how I've been doing it for the long, long time. Um, but we got some bonus things. Uh, closed captioning is back on live. So if you're watching us on Twitch, we have live closed captioning. It is back. It was kind of important to me to have that for our live shows. Yeah. A little bit of housekeeping. Um, Back for Bread, which is our Back for Blood playthrough, continues tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That's me and Jordan. We have two open spots. If you want in on that, at Reply Us in Discord. That's going to be going down at uh, 7 or 7.30 p.m. tomorrow night. It's going to be live. That is recorded. It'll end up on YouTube. The pilot episode is out before we decided to make it a thing. The current episode is up for patrons. It's also in the uh, Discord. If you want to go check that out under the announcement segment, it's going to get a good high def recording. And we're just going to try to, you know, smash up some zombies and die a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Track Mania was fun. We were playing on a slightly yeah. updated playlist that I stuck together. We do that on Tuesdays. Uh, that's been completely updated. So if you participate, depending if like, hey, I just like uh, arcade racing or I just like physics racing and stuff like that. Or if you're like me and I'm like, I'm old, I need to keep my hand-eye coordination in good shape. Come check it out. You got a Mm -hmm. private Trek Mania server. That is up. We got 14 fresh maps and everything's finalized. And one final bit of information. We started a new show. And um, Mm -hmm. we've been waiting for some fantasy stuff to show up. And it's all about time (laughs) and time management. We had Sandy on last week, and I'm like, this is a great time to get things started. So we now have a Rings of Power, House of the Dragon, spoiler cast for patrons. It is Episode one <laughs> is up, and we call it Wizard's Nest. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I like the wizard hat on the poop emoji. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute, so that is our. Uh, that was me after literal dozens of minutes. And fo- not Photoshop, not even Geb. I did it in uh, DaVinci Resolve. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> and um, those are, it was, it was really short. I mean, we did uh, the first two episodes of Rings of Powder, Power and uh, House of the Dragon in like 20 minutes. So that's going to be like the first 10 minutes of the pre pre super shows and just kind of chopped off if you want that because it is just too spoilery. You know, I didn't want to leave it in the pre pre super shows and I'm like, avoid these first because you're not i know i'm not i'm not so I'm like, don't listen to this there's spoilers i'm like i'll just not pay attention I'm like oh crap. yeah I was <laughs> so there's that bunch of fun things fun times and uh we'll be back friday for a points match in track mania so if you want to come watch or if you want to participate we'd love to have you but yeah. until then we got to talk about everybody's favorite desktop you can't get enough of it you love it and we want to help improvement improve yes. it even we're talking about GNOME. More importantly, mm-hmm. we're talking about GNOME Info Collect, which I saw some bad responses to. I saw some people running around. This is data collection. Oh, no, they're spying on us. Mm-mm. Let's talk about <laughs> what this program does. It's going to tell them your Linux distro version, your hardware OEM, your model, CPU, flat pack, flat hub. Let them know. Is that installed? Favorite applications, mm-hmm. your GNOME extensions that you get installed, your default browser. You know nothing too bad and you can remove this after it's collected your information now i also want to remind everybody the same mechanism exists on kde they do have something yeah. comparable but you have to opt in by running the uh, cli program and accepting some the data this you have to install all on its own and it's not telemetry it's not that was the common thing that i've seen pop up online like telemetry spyware and all that no no if you're being generous, you can call this an opt-in survey that you have to download the application to install and run yeah. intentionally in order for the survey to work. But I want each and every one within the sound of my voice to see if you can get it up and running in WSL, because I think that'd be fun. Yeah, that would be interesting. <laughs> yeah. uh, the only thing I would say, Jill, is I you would think this coming from the GNOME Foundation that would have to, some type of GUI attached to it, right? Yeah. No, it's a command line. So um, I easily actually installed the Snap version on Ubuntu, and it worked well. 
and uh, it's real easy to run. And honestly, I wish all you know all of our desktop managers um, had this tool and can track and track this data, and that would lead to all the desktops improving. And this is a really good move for for GNOME. I, I think this is excellent because I, I think they're going to find lots of people have GNOME extensions installed. Even I do. I have uh, often dash to dock or dash to panel installed. And uh, a lot of us who, who, who do run GNOME also use Flatpak and Flathub. So this is really valuable information for the crew. And they have been, you know, integrating uh, a lot of features that people use as plugins um, into GNOME over the last few releases. So this, this, this will help them uh, improve it even better and maybe include some of those utilities that we, we would like. <laughs> I did think uh, not only would you say you used a snap, to get it mm -hmm. installed, I use which the is snap, good. yeah. It's also available in a copper repo for the Fedora, and uh, I think there's instructions as well for getting up and running an Arch. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> if that's your thing, participate. And if it's always, you know, it's how you react to things. I know when you're, I'm installing, Debian has a survey thing during the install, but it's like default, it's off. You got to like click yeah. two things to get into it. Turn when it, it when it comes to you like that, you're like, all right, fine, yeah, cool. Since you ask, you know, as opposed to Wait a minute. What you know? You're just you've just been collecting data. How do I cut that off? Looking at you, Unity, but not Linux. Unity, the game engine, Unity. More importantly, the games. Yeah. <laughs> but on the topic of Unity. Yeah. Speaking you thought of, I was of just Unity gloss desktop. Over that. No, nay. <laughs> I had a reason to. So this is actually really exciting news. Uh, Canonical is recognizing Ubuntu Unity now as an official Ubuntu flavor, starting with the upcoming Ubuntu 22.10 Kinetic Kudo release, which is coming out in late October of this year. And uh, Ubuntu Unity actually was formerly known as Ubuntu, the Ubuntu Unity Remix distro. And it came out a few years ago as part of the Ubuntu 20.04 LTS Focal Fossa operating system series, but it was an unofficial flavor. And as a re and this was because of the result of Canonical abandoning its beloved Unity 7 desktop environment more than five years ago and moving over to GNOME. And I think this is fantastic. Um, I would just want to say congratulations to Rudra Saraswat for the Ubuntu Unity official status. He has been working really hard and improving the Unity 7 desktop every day. It's so much faster now than it used to be. And, you know, he also maintains the Unity 7 desktop environment and recently released Unity 7.6 as the first major release in the past six years. <laughs> so we talked about that here on the show uh, not too long ago. So it's just, a, it's such a nice desktop. It's so, so smooth and, and quick. And there were so many progressive elements to Unity that I enjoy. So I'm looking forward to having, you know, an official, uh, official spin <laughs> of Ubuntu Unity. This is, it's very exciting. So we're going to see, you know, uh, uh, beta versions up updated every day and... It's it's all good. It's it's really great news. It's the perfect desktop for the um, aspiring Linux hipster. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like man, I was using Unity before it went mainstream. Maybe it's going to come back. Maybe it's going to be the next big thing. I don't know. Um, I played with Unity way back, way back. You know, well before 1.0, and um, yeah, I looked at it. And I'm like, oh, that's a thing. That's neat. It exists. I'm just I'm more blown away by just the beauty of open source, ladies and mm -hmm. gentlemen. Somebody can go, you know what? I really like that thing. Yeah. And not stopping there, going, and I'm going to do something about it. That's how you get my respect right there. You're like, I'm going to put in the work because the idea guy, there's a billion idea guys. Somebody's going to do the perspiration, that other 99%, and bring it back outside of just, oh, I'm doing this for me. No, we're going to get this up and running somewhere else. Now all the way clawing back into something that resembles an official Ubuntu release. 
So, yeah. Good work. And very, very exciting. To me, it, it looks like Gnome 3. I guess, or Gnome 4, whatever Gnome is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm lost if when you get me on anything resembling, resembling a modern Linux desktop, if it doesn't look like CDE or uh, like even KDE, I'll throw, I'm not throwing anybody under the bus. I'm throwing me under the bus here. Um, how does this work? <laughs> At all I do is I go for a terminal. Once I get a terminal, yeah. I'm like, fine, okay, I can probably suss it out. So good work, good work. I want to do a little bit of digging around and see what type of a support unity is going to have uh because i think that originally ran on the canonicals attempt at their own displacer for mirror right Mm -hmm. yeah that's that's right yeah is that going to be up and running on wayland at some point does it currently work on wayland i don't know these are questions that i would like some answers to but it's my fault because i haven't looked into them but yeah that's there's your feel-good story for this week yeah this this is awesome yeah, there's and- so many, you know, Ven, uh, to your point, is one of the reasons that GNOME looks like Unity is because they borrowed a lot of the, you know, uh, features that people loved from Unity to GNOME. So that makes sense. <laughs> so they were like equally as confusing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for a long time, you know, with Unity, for a long time, I held out with like, maybe this makes perfect sense on a touch device. And I finally plugged in one of oh, my yeah. yellow touch screens with unity back in the day i'm like nope this still doesn't make any type of sense but people loved it and yeah this it's makes great me on the netbooks yeah. and small uh, small displays it's really good for that <laughs> i think that's great that is wonderful but we i, I buried the real Uh-oh. feel good story of this week no. <laughs> all about microsoft and how much it loves a particular penguin yes <laughs> you're long <laughs> national nightmare is over ladies and gentlemen teams on linux is getting an upgrade it is even though it's been a dumpster fire since its release in 2019 after three years of not really trying microsoft they've decided to scrap the project just let's just get rid of it in favor of give me that drum roll no mm-hmm. no drums <laughs> progressive web apps ladies and gentlemen because that will <laughs> fix all of your problems now it's an extra layer of nope because you're going to be forced to use Edge of Chromium. I'm not even joking around because that's right. Firefox doesn't yeah. know what a progressive oh. web app is. Admittedly, that's a Firefox problem, if we're going to be honest. But yeah. you know what? No one really wanted extra features, Microsoft. They wanted yeah. basic <laughs> features that worked. <laughs> and here we are. I have uh, been very blessed you would say never to have used Teams, but I'm surrounded by people that are forced to use Teams. Nothing but complaints the entire time. Like, and we're not talking about complainy people that complain about it and like, no, this thing's busted. It barely functions and it functions different on different browsers, on different computers. Like they have a strategy to make it work kind of right. So they can interact with their employers and groups. Mm. Making this a progressive web app. You know what? If it fixes it, Okay, but I don't yeah. think it's going to fix it. And also, on Linux, you're making something that doesn't work with Firefox. That seems like you didn't think your clever plan all the way through. Yeah, I know. That was, that was I was actually really also uh, saddened to hear this. But uh, on the positive no- note, I do realize it will be better, honestly, for the Linux community because it will allow Microsoft to update the Linux version of Teams quickly and in conjunction with the Windows version. So there is that. And also the new web, uh, progressive web app will support background blur, custom backgrounds, reactions, and a couple other desktop app like features that were only supported on the Windows version. Like, yeah. Right after you install Edge. Who cares? (laughs) So I didn't care about that too much. But yeah, we just want an app that works. And if this, this helps Microsoft achieve that, that's nice. But they really need to make it make it work on Firefox too. <laughs> it, again, I got to go back to that. It, that's a Firefox problem. Yeah, <laughs> this isn't like you know. Nobody at Mozilla went, "Oh, look at us!" But we don't like they know about that. Uh, but my whole thing is like making it a web app. Okay, fine. Maybe it's a better love story than like a you know one point five gigabyte electron wrapped piece of nope, but. It remains to be seen. I don't have much faith in this. Uh, and again, you're not going to be able to use it in Firefox. 
That's going to irritate some people because I know some people that are like, I will have nothing Chromium related. It better work in Chromium, right? Or people are mm-hmm. going to be real mad. However, I've had more than one person recommend Teams for Linux, the unofficial Microsoft Teams for Linux client to me. And yeah. it is regularly nice. updated. It is one piece. <laughs> There'll be a link to this in the show notes. Like there was a release yesterday, all right? So <laughs> Ismel Martinez, he maintains that. And, um, this gets the job done, apparently, and it's available as an app image, RPM, Deb, Snap, and just your tar.gz. So I would suggest maybe giving that a look right after you visited patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. That's a great way to support the show. We got a bunch of membership levels up to mm-hmm. including. We got share links, death notes, sea monsters. They all mean something. They're like different ranks with different reward tiers all the <laughs> way up to corporate overlord that's right you could be at a corporate overload i thought that was fun i was talking about that on the show saturday mm-hmm. i had to fight because we're adults and patreon didn't want me to do like a random like off number it wanted to be a nice round thing but i'm like no this thing needs to equal 350 at the end of the month yeah <laughs> yeah it needs to be you know <laughs> true fitty we finally made it work but that's also an option you can head over to linuxthemecast.com we got a support button. We got merch, PayPal. We got studio wish zones. Uh, all mm-hmm. the stuff. Jill's got an Amazon wish list. If you want to yeah. pick Jill up something, send her a note with something that blinks with RGB and whatever that is, a mechanical keyboard display. Yeah, I added Stand a few things there. Holder. Yeah. All right. Because I have, I have several hundred keyboards and I like to show them off. <laughs> and our favorite one to visit, the Kingston 240, uh, which is uh, $24.99. Correctly. Yeah, it did go down in price. It's still not down to uh, like fifteen ninety nine that it once was. But. Oh, man. Yeah, I was like, what do you, I bought a couple of these. Uh, yeah. I have one for our studio. There's our disappointing super micro motherboard that is not green. Um, <laughs> drives, buttons, audio box. I'm just like, I'm price watching these uh, Gen 2 Threadrippers because... Here's the thing. I, I really want to believe at some point they're going to go on fire sale. Ah, oh, yes. You know, somebody <laughs> clears out inventory. And of course, in case of emergency, let's buy like a big corporate business. I was about to buy that thing the other day. So mm. <laughs> you want to talk about, you think Jordan's going to be grumpy for the next couple of months because he's doing like caloric restriction part of his diet? Think, Man, I'd be, I would be more grumpy than normal for like, <laughs> eight months after that after having spent three grand on a lenovo i don't have anything against lenovo but <laughs> ugh, it's like getting a pre-built box though isn't it yeah i know I I'm like know. man that's <laughs> not cool like i say that but i have like pre-built boxes down here from like dell and hp but they're not important boxes yeah they're not your the ones you're using for your main system <laughs> all right. the time yeah oh uh, i don't know i probably have an image it but it's out of order but we do thank you for your support. Uh, come hang out with us in Discord the other six days of the week. That is now back to linked. Everything, our bots are back up and working as of this Yay. morning. Uh, so if you want to talk in Twitch or IRC or live channel in Discord, all of that's linked together so you can pop in and chat with each other. We have a couple other channels in our Discord for our Twitch subs and our patrons. And um, that's access to like our Trek Mania stuff. Uh, we have announcements, early access to videos and things like that. Pick a level. If you can, that's brilliant. We'd still love you to come hang out with us and do the things that we do, share the show, all the other fun stuff that you're supposed to do that I'm probably forgetting about because I'm horrible at marketing. But it keeps us loud, live, and independent, commercial-free, and we're not beholden to anyone but you, which is a horrible idea. Let's keep doing it. Yeah. (laughs) We love you all. (laughs) What do we have this week for a slice of pie? Uh, Radio controls. Yeah. Ah, But not the kind of radio you think of. (laughs) Not a traditional uh, boombox, like from the 80s. <laughs> so this is the INAP Malinka. It's a Raspberry Pi radio controller, which doubles as a handheld gaming rig. Yeah, so the creator, Leon, explains that the driving motivation for creating this project stemmed from a need to control his head crab robot remotely. This is a <laughs> real problem faced yes. by modern people. You need to control your head crab. Yeah. See, initially, I was thinking of a, like, like a little robot that, that sits in your hair and, and helps get rid of dandruff. <laughs> That's... No, but this no. is a generous one. It brings danger from other people to you. Yeah, very true. <laughs> so, yeah, it uses an NRF24 
L01 radio module. And it involves a custom PCB that he made that uses a, a mounted Raspberry Pi Zero module. And he actually uses the RetroPi OS with it, but it could easily work with uh, Laka or Raspberry Pi OS. And it's it's a nice, it's like a, a, a mini, you know, Nintendo Switch or, or, or a mini uh, Steam Deck. It spans 160 millimeter across, supports two analog joysticks, a series of buttons, and has an LCD touchscreen. And uh, it's got, you know, 3D printable files that you can uh, download and print with. And he's got all the in instructions and all the tools that he used on his GitHub and on Reddit. So it's well documented. You could build this, you know, probably in a in a in a day or two, and it's really cool device. <laughs> it's I really can think cool. of just one extra tool <laughs> that he needs. <laughs> just one. Hear me out. A cheap hot air flow station because I'm looking at that uh, uh, connector. Okay. Where he's done, a, you know, just the drag soldering and like, ooh, chewed up and like all that wonderful plastic smell coming out of that. Yeah, yeah, that that would be a thing. Anytime I'm dealing with surface mounts, uh, I got a reasonably cheap uh, hot air station. It was like 200 bucks. Like it, like the cheap one on Amazon. It gets the job done if you're patient with it. But hey, if you want to do the drag soldering, go for it. There's a great guide that will link to the GitHub project. And I think yeah. it's kind of neat. It, it's a portable gaming handheld I, that has an yeah. antenna sticking out of it but kind of like our theory and i'm like tell me more about this remote control head crab that's what yeah. i spent all of my time <laughs> looking for i'm like where's the project on the remote control head crab i want I'm, I'm staying tuned but there it is in action <laughs> and you can do some uh gaming on it uh yeah it's got a nice little oh there's the case nice 3d yeah, printed very beautiful looks good works at uh i think it's really cool that he made his own pcb too that's that's impressive oh, and yeah. because he, he did all that research and development for this now it's just going to make it easier for someone else to do it to you can go their play own. with it 100 yeah. yeah see when i see stuff like this uh i'm just just get a big smile because i mean that works also do not get this anywhere near the tsa um <laughs> just because of the antenna connector they're not going to have any of that. They're like, nope. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and the 3D printable files also include a version without the radio antenna hole. So you can just use it as a handheld gaming system. Oh, yeah, but don't do yeah. that. I mean, keep it. Screw yeah. the antenna in. Go downtown. Go hang out. Play with your antenna hanging out of your head. <laughs> You know, and you could you could you can make two of them and have the other other. Per it looks like uh, you guys are both uh, two people are playing games <laughs> right. together over the air. You know, <laughs> that way you can get the local and the federal police to show up. Uh, yeah, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for this week's weekly daily Wednesday. If you have any information on our remote control head crap project, please send it into the show. You can do that over at LinuxGameCast dot com. Hit the contact button. Leave a comment on the YouTube video or the Patreon post. <laughs> we'll get to it. All right, everyone. Have a great rest of your week. We're going to roll some credits to thank you as soon as I click yeah. on that. Oh, and thank you, Arthur. And yeah, Unity 7 actually ran, ran um, on Compiz. And Unity 8 was supposed to be run on Mir. I, I knew Mir was worked, worked in there somewhere. So thank you, Arthur. And I do want because... to thank M. Bodhi <laughs> for the five-month resub along with skills oh, yeah. in seven months. Yeah, Bodhi. Nice. Oh, awesome. Thank you, executive producers and our producers and our advisor, our Theron, our Chicago kicks people, our sea monsters, <laughs> all our wonderful death notes, <laughs> and all our chairlings. We have a ton of them, and I can't read it quick enough <laughs> to go through them. <laughs> hey, everyone. But it was beautiful. We'll see you next week. Love Bye -bye. you all. <laughs>